Hello, welcome to Museum Moments. My name is Ellie Gettinger. I'm the Education Director at Jewish Museum Milwaukee, and I am joined today across the thin wall from me by my colleague, Molly Dubin. So it's a funny thing, we're in the same building, we're under one roof, and we're on two screens. <laughs> That's exactly correct. Well, well it's just, lovely to be here with you, Ellie. We, we've done hundreds of museum moments. Molly and I are the people you've probably seen the most doing them. And this is the very first time we've ever been doing one together. True story. Um, so as we start today's museum moment, this is one of our previews of an upcoming exhibit. And an exhibit, it's an exhibit that Molly has been working uh, her fingers to the bone to get uh, open this Friday. So I'm really excited to talk Scrapyard. So Molly, can you take us through the process of why we would want to bring a mu exhibit in about Scrap and what's exciting about this exhibit? Yeah, definitely. So Scrap is something that we, I think, as a staff and, and even, you know, lay leaders in our community, it's, it's a topic that's come up a lot over the years because we have such a rich scrap history in Wisconsin and particularly in the, the Jewish community. So when our friends at the Jewish Museum of Maryland uh, a number of years ago let us know that they were writing a grant and going to be developing this really large exhibit, we were thrilled and thought, what a terrific opportunity uh, once that's completed to be able to bring it here, which is exactly what we're doing, and also to augment with our own original piece. So not only are we, you know, getting this kind of big overview of national, international, but also an opportunity to really tell some great stories and look back at some businesses that have had, you know, a big impact on the landscape of Wisconsin and, and definitely on the Jewish community. So I want to get into the look of this exhibit. So here we're going to pull up our images and I'm going to share my screen. Um, so Molly, can you take us through what we're seeing here and what people can expect when they're visiting this exhibit? Um, yeah. So I, once you, you, once you'll come into the space, you'll, you'll see there is a great deal to this exhibit. There are actually, over 300 objects and media pieces and interactive displays. So it really goes from starting with, there's our, our lovely title wall, and, and now we're kind of uh, getting into the beginning of the narrative, which really goes back to immigration and to peddling, which is a story we're very familiar with here at the Jewish Museum in Milwaukee and, and somewhat of a ubiquitous uh, narrative for Jewish communities across the country, this idea of coming to a new country, not having a lot of money, certainly not having a lot of opportunities, both in terms of socioeconomic opportunity and also because of anti-Semitic situations. So what started out is like the peddling, collecting scrap, collecting rags, the old rag and junk men. Um, that's where this all starts. And we go through the whole evolution in this national scope, um, along with case studies and really taking us through modern innovations and through to contemporary sustainability, green movements, reuse, recycle, repurpose. Um, and looking at our, our own footprint. Yeah. Sorry, Molly. Yeah. One of the things that it gets to is also, just as you're talking about, just the diversity of objects and things. First of all, the fact that there's 300 artifacts and objects and, and things in this exhibit is bananas. This, I think, is the largest exhibit that we've ever brought in. Yeah, I'm going to um, agree with that now that it has it's up. <laughs> So many narrative pieces, so many, and but I think when we hear that word scrap, we tend to really think metal, but this is really, you know, everything from paper to rags to bone, which I think is fascinating rubber, you know, and really exploring kind of the breadth of what can be recycled. So one of the things that I think was really intriguing to us about this exhibit was their interactives. Yeah. I'm going to give a little bit of a, a kind of message about as we look at two of the kind of bigger pieces. Yeah. So I, yeah, this was really exciting because it's a really family friendly exhibit and there's a lot of great history, but also looking at, you know, science and technology. Um, so what you're looking at here are a couple of really 
great interactives. One is what is your value in scrap? So basically you stand on there and it equates what you would be worth <laughs> if, if you were sold as a scrap commodity. Um, and and have, uh, copper, aluminum, and paper, are those the three? Yes, exactly, in exactly. The variation in copper, we're worth a lot more money. That's very true. That's very true. The commodities have very different values. And as we aptly learned um, during the process of researching this exhibit, that really scrap yards and the whole scrap industry are somewhat of a bellwether for, uh, you know, the, the economic um, situation in our society and, and where things are going. So that was really interesting to learn and makes a lot of sense. So what you're seeing on, on the other side there, we have an entire motorbike that has the full piece, but then it breaks it down into all the different parts to show you what it's comprised of and what can be recycled and what it might be repurposed as. And along with those two things, we have a, another interactive that looks at what strength might be required to make a bale of plastic water bottles. Um, we have one of the other interesting things we really look at in this is the, the perception, both in terms of, you know, where these people started out and being looked down upon, um, kind of being kind of the ills of society, um, the depictions within pop culture, which is really interesting. So we have some music you can listen to. It certainly was a topic that infiltrated uh, Yiddish theater and film and eventually television. So um, that's a, a little bit of, of what's going on here. And I just want to, as we're, you know, Scrap had this kind of early, we talked to so many people in the Scrap industry, and so many of them talked about the fact that they were junk peddlers, yep. um, and uh, and that idea of junk peddling to to kind of legitimate recycling, and, and those when you're talking about stereotypes and perceptions, that, that certainly comes up. One of the things that really shifts the perception is World War II. Definitely. Here we're looking at the panels related to World War II, including this great interactive, which highlights many of the posters that were used uh, to uh, get people involved in the uh, the fight. Yeah, it, I mean, it is interesting to kind of watch that, how it was really, you know, so looked down upon and kind of this, this negative perception. And then, you know, heading into World War II, it was something that was so necessary and all of a sudden all of these scrappers were looked at as heroes in being able to contribute to the war effort and to you know america's involvement in the war so it was a huge shift in looking at this industry and the people involved um and actually if you look at the very top of this panel you guys probably can't read it on your phones and whatnot but one of the, the quotes there that they're pointing to is from scrapper Max Chudnow in 1942 saying, pointing to the bed, the lady said, that ought to make, make a lot of bullets. Chuckling, Max replied, yes, and we got to make millions. Bullets, not dollars. Ha ha. So even in the national exhibit, there's some points, there's some moments in which Milwaukeeans appear. And that's actually a pretty great segue to our Milwaukee exhibit. Now, you guys are looking at the least beautiful visual in the history of visuals. This is a list that we condensed. It is a crazy list. This list contains 372 names of scrap businesses or scrappers from the year 1900 to 1960. Um, and when we actually, we started compiling this list, there were over 2000 listings in city directories of scrappers, Jewish scrappers in that time period, which, we then condensed based on years and addresses, and we have to thank our volunteers, Lynn Redding and uh, Emma Gasinski Rose, who helped us break this down to try and have some sort of metric to just show how big the industry was in Milwaukee. Um, Molly, can you talk about this? This research was, was both <laughs> super fun and an incredible <laughs> challenge. Which side do you want to come down on? <laughs> <laughs> well, it was great, you know, and it is interesting, you know, to note, as you did, that in the national exhibit, you know, some Milwaukee businesses and individuals come up. And and that's because I, I think while this is an industry that was across the board, you know, and, and the country, um, Milwaukee and Wisconsin really had a huge impact. And in terms of the 
you know, kind of the national stage had a real presence. Um, so thinking about the fact that we know at least for half of the 20th century, 70 to 90 percent of the scrap industry industry was Jewishly run and or owned. And that, you know, that statistic and that grandiosity is very much reflected in, in what we researched and what we collected. There are just so many stories and, and they're intertwined, which is just fascinating. We love to talk about, you know, the two degrees of separation and in the I Jewish community of Milwaukee. Might be two, it might be too many degrees. I think it's like one. I think, it, you know, there are right. the, the family businesses, their family businesses, and then their family businesses with, you know, here we have Zeke Ephraim, who is the head, was one of the Ephraim brothers who ran a company and his wife was a Miller. And you're like, oh, and then, so they were competing directly against Miller compressing. And so you have nephews and cousins who are working on both sides of the same uh of the same industry not even like you know oh they're in ferris and we're non ferris but you know may, but actually with them they were competing directly um, and yeah and and the other thing we learned is that scrappers have very long memories yeah um, great <laughs> memories for scrappers we had a lot of great conversations with so many you know people throughout the community um that shared their stories their experiences um and they do have very long memories and and that was wonderful for us because it enabled us to you know really share this kind of micro narrative um you know in the parallels to the national and, and international narrative and as we said earlier milwaukee and wisconsin is just a a scrap industry wonderland so and and to that point we we have a little map that uh well actually oh, yeah. it's a pretty big map <laughs> yeah well and, and before i get you know switch this is a what i think one of the earliest pictures we have yeah. of scrap this is a picture of cohen iron and metal um and it's it's just such a great old picture with the horses and the you know and just yard. to you know think about once we get to like the huge you know, grappling cranes and all of that, you know, that original kind of wooden <laughs> makeshift crane with the, the magnet. When you think about, you know, what that evolved to, it's it's kind of extraordinary. So one of the things we wanted to endeavor to do in this exhibit is try to give some credence to scrap across the state. And literally this, this map could have probably had 50 or 60 more dots on it. And we just don't have the time space uh, any of that. So we tried to give kind of a representative sample of some of the scrap businesses statewide. Uh, I think we went as far north as Marinette, as far west as Eau Claire, and down right by the border with Burlington. And, and so you really cover the whole state. One of my favorite stories that comes out of this is, you know, the uh, you find the Schenken brothers in Sheboygan who open up right after World War II. And they have, as they, they list themselves, in their advertisement, they're all wearing their uniforms. Two of the three brothers were, were veterans, so that was like the pitch. Uh, we have Dennis Wasteman's father's uh, junk license from 1920. You needed, and these, these junk licenses were the uh, licenses that you needed until I think about the 1980s or so. You had to have a junk dealer license. Um, and we have some really great local artifacts going in. Um, thanks to Jeff Schuster for giving us bales of copper and aluminum and we have um a loading uh it's a baler right like an, an old, antique baler yeah cardboard and paper press um, antique baler definitely get your fingers caught in there um <laughs> some really funny um postcards and pins from chudnow iron and metal yes and yes then, we knew where where Dick got his uh, sense of humor in in getting into comedy sports, developing comedy sports. A hundred percent. Started with scrap and so earth. <laughs> all going to be open. We hope we've whet your appetite for this exhibit and what you're going to see. Um, we have to thank the tremendous number of people who came together to make this exhibit possible. You can see our donors there, including our lead donor, Alter Trading uh, Corporation. Um, we really appreciate all of their support. Uh, we also have to thank our supporter, Robin Cohen, for her support of Museum Moments. And there are a couple of big announcements. You know, this is a museum moment about something that you can actually come and do in person. 
This exhibit opens on Friday, but Thursday night we have our uh, special, um, our, our opening. You can still register. It's all uh, virtual. We're going to be hearing from the curator of the exhibit, a guy named Zachary Levine. Um, and we're also going to have a special performance from Fox and Branch. They're amazing on the washboard uh, and guitar. It's the first time ever you'll hear the washboard accompanied by the guitar. <laughs> and um, uh, Molly and I will be doing a more formal tour. Yes, yes. And the other thing we should mention, because inevitably, because this was such a vast industry and impacted so many people, um, I'm sure that are, there are people out there that are going to see this and go, oh, you know, my, my family was involved, or, you know, I have a great story to share, or an image to share. And we do have a scrapbook um, that we can certainly add things to. So if you're not in the scrapbook yet, you can be. <laughs> so feel free to reach out to us um, at either through Facebook, um, through our email, and let us know if there's something you need to contribute that you're like, how did we miss this? Um, thank you so much, Molly, for taking time out of your crazy schedule right now. Thanks, Thank everybody. you, Ellie. We really are looking forward to seeing you in the next couple of months. Make sure you check out jewishmuseummilwaukee.org for all of our upcoming programs, including that opening, which I mentioned. And uh, join us again for another museum moment. We're back after our little holiday sabbatical. Um, and next week, we're going to be talking about the Peshtigo Fire with the uh, lead volunteer from the Peshtigo Fire Museum. Lots mm -hmm. of interest and intrigue there. Definitely. Thanks so much and have a wonderful day.